Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to Bookmas. Welcome to Bookmas's last video of Bookmas. I'm so sad that it's over. It went so quick. I had so much fun filming the videos, uploading, seeing you guys watching them. It's just been such a fun time and I'm so sad this is our last video, but it's not the last video of the month. I have a few other videos coming out throughout December, so there's still more videos to look forward to, but for Bookmas, it's the last consecutively posted video, which is sad. But it's an exciting one because it is an end of the year book tag and I got all the questions and everything from Bestie Death. So she posted a book tag on her channel. Go watch that one. See all of her answers to these questions that she actually picked out. She asked her followers for some bookish type of end of the year questions and she created a little tag. So I'm going to be answering the same questions that she chose in her video. That's what today's video is. We're going to really reflect on the 2024 reading season, the season of reading. I have a bunch of books to talk about, a bunch of questions to answer. So we're going to get right into it. And I'm excited. Okay, let's start. All of these questions I think have more than one book answered for them because one thing about me is I can't make up my mind. I can't just have one book answered for these questions. So there's multiple books, maybe two or three, maybe even four for some of these answers. And the first one is the most disappointing read of the year. So the first one for this question is The Brothers Hawthorne by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is in the same world as the Inheritance Games trilogy, which is one of my favorite trilogies by this author. I really enjoyed my time reading that. And when this came out, I was so excited because I think I had wrong expectations going into that. That's why I was disappointed, which is usually what happens with disappointing reads my expectations are just really high so with this one I thought it was going to be all four brothers because there's four of them in the inheritance games trilogy and I thought we we're going to get all of their point of views in this but it was just the two main brothers and I did not enjoy that I just had different expectations for whose point of view it was going to be and I think I just didn't enjoy the storyline that followed I feel like it had two separate stories going on within this long book and I thought it was going to be all kind of meshed together you know have the whole gang together reading about them and their journey and stuff like that but it kind of just felt like two different stories going together and it felt a little bit long for what it was about I don't, I don't know. I just had high expectations for it and unfortunately wasn't met within this book. I still love the world, love the characters. I just didn't love this storyline. The second book that I have that was a little disappointing to me was Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I did not enjoy this book. I think I gave it three stars. All the other Allie Hazelwood books that I've read, I absolutely loved. I think just this one fell a little bit flat for me. I don't know if it was just because of the age range it was or the storyline. I feel like it was like heavy on the chest and obviously I knew chess was going to be a major component in it. I just didn't absolutely love it like I thought I was going to. Again, and expectations were just a little too high with this one. The next question is what was an underdog book? So the first one is the Lachlan Feud series by Robin D. Mall and L. Madison. This is a four book series. I didn't read the fourth one but the first three I absolutely loved. I completely binged it. I found this series on TikTok and randomly downloaded it on my Kindle. They're all Kindle Unlimited but the covers and the spines of all four of these books are so beautiful. It's a fantasy romance series. If you liked Akhtar it kind of gives some of the same vibes within this and it's just fun to follow along. Chapters are short, stories easy to understand, the world building isn't complicated it was just a fun time reading it. This one definitely feels like an underdog book that I read or series that I read. I didn't finish it but second one is How to Love Your Neighbor by Sophie Sullivan. I remember reading this earlier in the year and I think I got it in a blind dates with a book. Was that what it was? I think that's where I got this book from. I read it earlier this year and I think it was just like an enemies to lovers type of story. I liked the storyline. I liked the writing. I liked the relationship. If I'm remembering correctly I don't think there was a third act breakup which I really enjoyed especially in a romance book but this also is a companion series. I think there are stories of the main character's brother so there's other books in this little series. This one I remember reading. I really enjoyed. I don't see a lot of people talking about it, but it's a really good story from what I remember. The next question is what is an overhyped book that you read? So I have two for this one again, but the first one is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I think I gave this one four stars, but I never ever ever think about this book. I had it on my shelf for a while and I had a lot of people telling me I should read it. You know, the end is heartbreaking, all this stuff. And I think it got too hyped to me before reading it. So again, I went in with high expectations with it. Going back and thinking about it, I don't think I enjoyed it. I feel like it was a slower story. It's basically just a Queen of Hearts retelling kind of what happened before Alice in Wonderland. So you're in like the Alice in Wonderland world. I do like Marsha Meyer's writing. I like how imaginative she is in this world and like creating the Alice in Wonderland vibes and everything. But I just don't think I liked this as much as I thought. I remember having so many people just tell me how much I was going to love it. So I think I just, I thought I was going to. And I felt really hyped at the moment when I started reading this and when I did read it that I don't know. It just felt a little overhyped from what I remember about the book. The next overhyped book, you can probably guess what I'm about to say. And that is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. I only say this one because I know so many people and I've seen all over over how many people love this series, love this book, storyline, the characters and everything, and I just never felt that. So this one is a hyped up book, a hyped up series that I just didn't like, and to me feels a little bit overhyped. I just didn't enjoy it personally, so I feel like you guys saw this one coming. Then we have a book that surprised you. The first one is A Book Lovers by Emily Henry, and that is only because I TNF'd this last year, I believe, and then I reread it this year, and I ended up really enjoying it, really enjoying her writing and the characters and the storyline a second time around. I kind of connected with it more, and I think just because I DNF'd it and didn't think I was ever gonna get back to it and then I did and ended up enjoying it. It did definitely surprise me because I just did not expect to enjoy it as much as I ended up 
enjoying it. And then we have The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I did not think I was gonna love this book as much as I did. This is one of my favorite reads of the year. I just didn't think I was going to enjoy like the magical realism and all of that mixed in. I just don't really love that type of genre mixed in with like a romance story, kind of like a modern day, but like have a little magic thrown in. I didn't think I was gonna enjoy it as much as I did, but the writing, the storyline, the characters, the quotes and everything within this book is just so, so, so good. I loved this book. Definitely surprised me this year. Then we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This one I randomly downloaded loaded had no expectations going into it and I think it's the best way sometimes to find a book that you love you just don't expect to love it as much as you do and I remember reading this and just like falling in love with the writing and the story and the characters and it completely surprised me how much I ended up loving this and loving the story and I cannot wait for the second one to come out and then the last one that surprised me this year was Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid this one only surprised me because I haven't loved Taylor Jenkins Reid's books other than Daisy Jones and the Six I haven't enjoyed the other books I've read by her it's just not something that's in the genre I usually go for or usually like so after reading this I enjoyed enjoyed it so much. I think it gave it four stars. I can't really remember. I read this when me and Haley and Destiny first met up, which is so crazy. If it wasn't for that video and getting this book to read by them, I just don't think I would have ever picked it up. So it definitely surprised me with how much I enjoyed it. This next one is going to have a lot of answers for it because this one I just completely could not pick one or two books and that is your favorite book couples of the year. I have a lot so we're just going to like rapid fire through these because I have just so many book couples that I have just fallen in love with this year. First one is from Magnolia Parks but also I'm going to include Julian in this. I feel like these characters. I'm gonna include the three of them in this one. I don't know if you haven't read this that probably doesn't make sense why I'm doing that but they are top probably of my list. Yeah I'm not gonna say too much but some of my favorite characters, book characters and couples I have met this year. Then we have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I love these two characters in the storyline but them together and the way that Brianna just understood Jacob and his needs kind of. I just really liked how they cared for each other in this one. I love this couple. Then we have a reread and that is January and Gus from Beach Read. They are one of my top couples probably ever. I am a obsessed with them, obsessed with Gus, I'm obsessed with this story and these two characters are just, oh, they are so good together and I just, I love this book so much. Then we have another Emily Henry and that is Happy Place, Harriet and Wynn. I loved them. I still love them. I connected so much with Harriet but their story together, I just enjoyed reading it and their chemistry and their history and all that they've been through. I just loved so much reading about these two. And then we have two Chestnut Springs books. Obviously I had to include Reckless and Powerless. This is Jasper and Sloan, Winter and Theo. These two are just top book couples of the year. Honestly because of Jasper and Theo, they are just like top male main characters I love this year but the way that they were with their significant others in these books it just really stood out to me i loved them so much like theo is like a blueprint obsessed with him and jasper just really enjoyed his story with sloan i love these two characters couples so much i told you guys there's a lot for this one i'm not done <laughs> then we have powerless by lauren roberts they are not like a complete couple i guess you could say but just them in the story i've never read a fantasy or a book in general that has made me giddy and giggle within the banter between two main characters like they are just like top tier for me these two especially kai i think about them every single day their relationship that they go through and all of that like it is so good then i'm just gonna hold up kingdom of ash because there are so many characters in the throne of glass series that for this book there's all the characters that end up here and the couples that end up here i'm just gonna very vaguely and in general say throne of glass couples because i don't want to say obviously who they are because if you haven't read it a lot goes on in the series and up until this point there are so many couples that just stand out to me that i am obsessed with and so good the way that she wrote these couples and these characters you just don't expect a lot that happens with a lot of them so I fell in love and became obsessed with a lot of the couples in this series. And then last but certainly not least, I told you there's just so many, but that is Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. I fell in love with Julian and Dahlia and their relationship. Again, they have like this history with each other and their like chemistry and connection and banter and all of it together. You can really tell that they're like meant to be together and I loved that so much. I loved the way that they like communicated with each other and I just, again, I was obsessed with them. Your favorite main characters of the year. First one goes right to the Throne of Glass series. Like I said, there are so many characters in here that I have become so connected to. If you watch the video of me reading this book, I kind of talked about it a little, but you follow them from the very first book up until this one and they go through so much. Their journey is incredible and so long and you follow with them through so many things. Like you can't even imagine that after finishing this, like I literally have connected to them so incredibly much that all of them, all the main characters in this book are my favorite main characters of the year. There's really 
and nothing else I can say. I am obsessed. Then we have The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Honestly, the five main characters of this book I became a little bit attached to while reading this series. I really enjoyed them as main characters throughout the whole series and just like getting to know them, their backstories, why they're in this program and how they do what they do. It, it was just so interesting and I loved this series that they are some of my favorite main characters, especially in like a YA book. I usually don't connect to YA books that often or like really at all. So this one in this series, I really connected to these characters and they were some of my favorites from this year. Then we have Jax from Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy and also he is in the Carvel trilogy, but this one mainly and specifically is where I met him because I read this first, this trilogy. Right off the bat, he became my favorite character of the whole thing. He still is my favorite character of the whole thing. I don't know really what it was. I think just he's like a morally gray type of fantasy male main character, but you kind of are rooting for him. Just the things he said, his character, what he did, like the backstory of how he is the Prince of Hearts and everything. I really loved him and he like immediately became one of my top main characters, especially in the Ballad of Never After. Not so much in Once Upon a Broken Heart, but this one really like solidified how much I loved him as a character. And then the last favorite character of the year that honestly, like I said, in top 23 of 2023, this book set me down the rabbit hole of my fantasy journey this year, Wrath from the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy really did it for me. He was like the first blueprint of like tearing down the world for her or just saying like who did this you and all like those good micro tropes you get in fantasy romances that I just ate up. After reading this I needed more of that so he is just like on top of the favorite characters of the year because he kind of set me down again the fantasy rabbit hole and I now love fantasy so much and he kind of started that this year. Then we have a new favorite author that you discovered. First one is Abby Jimenez. I absolutely love her writing and it's so easy to get into. She has the writing and the stories that you can kind of sit and escape the world. I know that reading in general is a form of escapism, but her book specifically and her writing specifically really take me out of the world and I could just sit, binge, like no brain power, just read. It's so fast paced. Her stories are so entertaining. Her characters you can connect to so easily right off the bat. She has cute stories, but she always includes some kind of meaningful things going on, some hardships and stuff. And the way that she can create the story like all around is so good. And I have become obsessed with her writing this year. Then we have Stephanie Garber. I read Once Upon a Broken Heart this year and I also started the Carvel Trilogy. I read the first two and I love her writing. I love how beautiful she can make a world and especially the fairy tale like essence that she wrote about and the way that she kind of created the setting and like the description she used. I really enjoyed this type of fantasy in her writing and also with the Carnival trilogy like the way she's just so creative with the worlds and creative with the storylines and the turns that she takes like I just really enjoy how like whimsical her writing is. Then we have Miss Elsie Silver. Chestnut Springs is her first series I've read from her. I want to go back and read the series that she has prior to this one. I just love her writing so much. I think it is so entertaining. I love that she creates side characters you become connected to and all of them together by the end of Chestnut Springs I was just obsessed with. And I know that I love her writing and the way that she creates these characters as well. I just became obsessed with her writing through Chestnut Springs this year. And then last but not least we have Lauren Roberts. This is her debut novel and it really just puts the word encapsulated me. I don't even know a better word. I have not stopped thinking about this since I read it. She included everything that I love in a romantic book into this. It is not complex. It is so easy to understand and digest and you're thrown into this world with high stakes going on but then the characters and the romance and the tension and the banter and everything you want in a romance to see she has done and done it in such a beautiful way like I'm obsessed with her writing and cannot wait for the second book to come out I am like on the edge of my seat waiting till next year the most frustrating book that you read this year first one is called words in a deep blue I don't remember when I read this it's really short so I think that's why I randomly picked it up I needed kind of like a palette cleanser between my books and I don't remember too much of what this was about but I think the storyline really frustrated me because our main character was dating this girl while the other main character was trying to pursue what was going it just nothing made sense really in the book it was short and sweet but like I couldn't connect to it in any way it did take place in a bookstore which is what really drew me in and on the summary I remember it saying that they communicated through notes through books and I thought that was what the main storyline was going to be with but it was just so interesting and I just didn't really love it and I thought I was going to but then we have once more with feeling this one was just frustrating because of the storyline I think that it took I just didn't really enjoy it and I couldn't really root for the two main characters like at all really I did enjoy her writing style it was very fast paced it flowed really well but I think just like the characters frustrated me a lot throughout the storyline that I just couldn't connect to them or root for them and then the last one is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune I was really excited about this one because I did enjoy her writing in her previous novel that I read but this one I just feel like I don't know it didn't do it for me like I thought it would because I think it was second chance but the way that they met I again just like the last book I talked about I couldn't root for them and I didn't feel their connection or their chemistry it just didn't really connect for me it made me a little frustrated trying to see them figure 
figure their stuff out. Then we have what is the happiest book that you read this year? So I have again a few for this one. I don't know. I just really can't choose one book. But the first one is a recent release that I haven't talked about yet. It'll be in my next wrap up, but Betting on You by Lynn Painter. I feel like any Lynn Painter book will make me happy. I think the way that she writes a story, especially some of her YA books, they make me happy reading them. Just seeing these like younger aged group trying to find love and going through their first romantic connection and seeing them do their things. I don't know. The Taylor Swift references, like everything about it makes me happy while reading it. And along with this is another Lynn Painter book and that is The Love Wager. This one I remember reading between a bunch of fantasy books and I needed a romance like this and I knew Lynn Painter would deliver. This is one of her adult romances and I remember, I think I read this in like a day, I couldn't put it down. I was just obsessed with the storyline, the characters, their chemistry, the banter, like everything that Lynn Painter gives, she gave in this book and the adult romance. It's my first adult romance by her that I read and I ate it up. I really enjoyed it and it just made me happy while reading it and I feel like her books always do that for me. Then we have Powerless Again by Lauren Roberts. I was trying not to repeat books in a lot of these. You'll see some books that I've talked about not come up again because I really tried not to repeat but I couldn't not bring this up again because of the way that I giggled majority of this book like I've never been happier reading a fantasy romance in my entire life. I sat there and I giggled, I blushed, I kicked my feet. For like 70% of this book like it just really hit so hard like sometimes I'll still go back through and open up to a quote and just like smile. So this book made me really happy. I mean there are parts of this book that are not happy like at all but majority of what I read between the two characters made me happy. Then we have Happily Ever After Playlist by Abby Jimenez. This one made me happy while reading it because the way the story starts it's kind of just like this funny little meet cute and I feel like Abby Jimenez loves doing meet cutes and this one really just hit with me. The dog is involved in that and I love when she writes about these dogs because they really just are thrown into the story and become such main side characters in a way and I loved the way these two kind of met. They just talked on the phone and the way that they were able to connect and flirt through calling each other just like it hit so hard. The, the banter right off the bat was so good and it made me happy reading this and it also has happy in the title so that makes sense. Then we have the best book adaptation of the year and I'm gonna say The Summer I Turned Pretty. As you guys know it's hard for me to sit and like genuinely watch a show or just watch a movie or watch anything. I have the worst attention span. I can't just sit and watch things but The Summer I Turned Pretty. I watched every episode of every season. I read all the books so I just really enjoyed the way that they took the books and made them into the show. I think the casting was great. I think that the setting and the scenery and all the places that they chose were great. There were some things that they switched up but I think that's totally fine for like the show and stuff. The musical choices that they made like all of it was just so good. I became really connected to it and when I read the books I wasn't really too connected to it. I think the show really reeled me in and I'm so excited for the next season. Next is what is the longest book you read this year and that is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass. I think this is over. Hold on. Oh guys I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> Why did I read that? This book is 980 pages and the longest book I've ever read, not just this year, an almost a thousand page book is crazy for me. And I feel like when people see this book and like don't know anything about it, they're like, why is that so long? There's no reason for it to be that long, but wrong. I could have read a thousand more pages of these characters. I would love to read a thousand more pages of these characters. Again, I became so connected that I need more. It wasn't enough. 980 pages was not enough. The next question is what is the shortest book that you read this year? And that is Six Scorched Roses by Carissa Broadbent. It's the novella between Serpent and Wings of the Night and I forgot the second one, but it's a novella between them. And I think it's like 200 pages. It's short and sweet, but I think that she did an incredible job introducing new characters that come in the second book and showing what they're about, what's their backstory and their storyline in such a short amount of time. Then we have what are your favorite covers of the year? First one has to be Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. There's also a Barnes and Noble edition of it that's pink and it's beautiful and stunning and I'm obsessed with it. I don't know what it is about this that it just it does something to me. I'm obsessed with it, the pink one especially. It is so good. This cover is beautiful. And then I honestly have to say Daisy Hates 2, The Great Undoing by Jessa Hastings. Cover is just like art. It's literally art. All of the Magnolia Parks covers, the original ones, are honestly super beautiful and I feel like just show so much of what the story is after you read it and especially this one the tattoos on his chest really show what's in this book and i think that just makes the covers even more special and even more beautiful but such a stunning cover then we have a book you haven't stopped thinking about we're gonna have some repeaters in this one of course i'll start off with this one because i've talked about it most and we'll just do it really short and sweet but that is powerless by lauren roberts again characters banter storyline everything about this book i have not stopped thinking about i go back into my quotes i look up the fan art and tiktoks and everything i am obsessed then we have my reread of the year honestly i haven't stopped thinking about this book since i first read it but my reread really slowly how much I'm obsessed with this book and I want to reread it again next summer. I think it's just gonna be a yearly summer thing for me. It's rereading Beach Read. I just, it does something to me. It just makes me feel good. I love the characters in the storyline. I love her writing in this one. It's so good. So I have not stopped thinking about January and Gus. I never will. Then we just have the entirety of Magnolia Park's universe. We all know this was coming and we all know I don't stop thinking about these characters in the storyline. I think I just really connected to them and connected to 
the story and just like what they were about and what they were doing and their history and right off the bat you guys know i've connected to these characters so much so obviously i just don't stop thinking about them the quotes not even just the characters but the quotes live rent free in my head and then of course the entirety again another series but throne of glass you guys knew this was coming i'm not gonna say too much but i've already said you go through so much with these characters that i just i'll never stop thinking about them or wanting more of their stories like i feel like i lost my best friends when this when this series was ended and i finished this book i just it was a journey then we have the cringiest read of this year the first one is my roommate is a vampire by jenna levine i honestly just couldn't connect to the characters in this one i think the storyline was fun i think these two characters platonically would have a really great friendship just like romantic I couldn't connect with them and when that happens I just get the ick and I got the ick really hard in this one and it just cringed me out in some parts I don't know what it was but it, just, it did cringe me out just a little bit and then we have Charlie Loving Clichés by Ella Mays this was the first book that I genuinely like, just got the ick really bad like the main character or the main guy I don't know what it was again when I can't connect the two main characters and like I can't feel their chemistry or like anything between them it just it goes downhill fast and this one the ick was really hard and the ick was really up there and I'm really upset that I got the ick with it because the cover is so cute I was so excited and I really love Marriage for One by her, but this one definitely cringed me out. Then we have Unpopular Book That You Love. First one is Daughter of No World by Carissa Broadbent. I think I've just seen a lot of people not enjoying this series by her as much as Serpent and Wings of the Night, which is understandable, but this was the first book I read by her and I absolutely loved it. I didn't love the second one. I actually DNF'd it, but this one just stands true to how much I loved it. I really enjoyed the storyline, the characters, the slow burn. I think it was so different of a fantasy that I read and I really love her writing. It's not confusing to get into and understand what's going on and love this one. Next one's not that it's an unpopular book, but I just think in the series it's the most unpopular in my opinion or at least one of the most unpopular so that is powerless by lauren roberts my favorite in the chestnut spring series and i feel like so many people love heartless or reckless and those are their favorites especially kate i feel like kate is like the most popular one in them but i love jasper jasper is my favorite he's my top my favorite book in the series not the series or anything or this book is unpopular obviously so many people have read it and love it and stuff like that but i just feel like out of all of them i don't think jasper is like the most loved i feel like i read a lot of popular books so that one was a little bit hard to choose an unpopular one that i love because i feel like i read a lot of books that like I see everywhere so they're kind of popular. Then we have the lowest rated on Goodreads and the highest rated and if I agree. The highest rated on Goodreads that I have read this year on my shelf is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass. It has a 4.66 rating on Goodreads with over 400,000 ratings and I gave this one a five star so I'm up there. I obviously agree with the rating. We all know how I feel about the series especially after this video so I agree. It, it deserves the high rating. And then the lowest rated on my shelf. I honestly think there was another book that was lowest rated but I didn't end up rating it so it didn't go on my shelf but the lowest rated on my shelf was booked on a feeling by jc lee this is part of an interconnected kind of standalone series this is the third one and i read this one first it has a 3.32 on goodreads with about a little under 8,000 ratings and honestly i completely agree with this it's not my favorite read i honestly could have put this into the question of what the cringies read this year was because this was another one where these two main characters are best friends but i could not feel their chemistry or see them together romantically that i got the ick like pretty hard in this one as well but i did enjoy the storyline and the setting it was in a bookstore and everything so it was still cute i do think it was like a fun romance to read but just not my favorite and not my favorite book characters together either then we have favorite book quotes of the year it was hard to come up with a few of my favorite book quotes because i just there's so many that i love like so much and a majority of them come from magnolia park series i think it's just so many beautiful quotes in there so i'm gonna read a couple from magnolia parks he laughs and for some reason it sounds like i'm ringing the doorbell of the home i grew up in and then another one from magnolia parks i don't have the picture right now but it just says cut me and I'd bleed him. Only those few words really show a lot. Another one from Magnolia Parks in BJ's point of view says, try to make it sound like having too much history with Magnolia Parks isn't the mounted deer I'll hang in the hallway of who I am, like loving her isn't the first thing you see when you walk through the door of me sorry those are probably my favorite from magnolia parks and then if i had to choose one from daisy hates too there's one quote that i know that everyone i feel like always talks about or thinks about or brings up when it's their favorite quotes after reading that book it just really sticks with me background julian is involved with like art and paintings and stuff so he's really in the art world and he's comparing her to a painting and to paintings and to art which that in itself is just beautiful but he says she is the goddess in the boat Botticelli? I don't know how to say that. She is the goddess in the blank clamshell. Her eyes are the water lilies in Monet's pond. She is the hand of God reaching down to mankind. Klimt's kiss is a portrait of us and I'm gonna steal it. Take it, make it mine, make her mine too. Maybe do that one first. 
he's comparing her to art basically and it is so beautiful anyway there's a lot more from that series that i could talk about but there's one from i believe queen of shadows that i don't want to say who says it the quote basically is i'll bleed whatever color you want me to and if you know the context of that if you know the characters that say that it will stick with me probably for the rest of my life and there are so many in the throne of glass series that i could say but that one that one hit hard there's a lot of quotes from this book that i could you know say there's one that really did it for me i never thought about what my favorite color was before it never seemed important not until i looked into a pair of ocean blue eyes and realized that perhaps drowning was a beautiful thing not until i looked into a pair of fiery blue eyes and realized that perhaps burning was a painless thing not until i looked into a pair of sky blue eyes and realized that perhaps falling was a peaceful thing i'd never thought about what my favorite color was before because i hadn't seen one that was worthy of the title until now that is blue i say i would have never guessed that and in his head he said neither would i kai is the blueprint if you need any good like just banter quotes like you'll get it from that he is such a sim honestly those are my favorite i think that i can think off the top of my head from the year and then the next question is books with the most unique concept you read this year the first one is one dark window by rachel gillig i think this was just unique to me because i haven't read a lot of dark gothic fantasies and i think the magic system in this was really interesting it's like playing cards and there's a mist they have to get rid of and it's collect the playing cards and i really enjoyed that and i think it was a unique way to include the magic system in a fantasy world and then i'm just going to include ashley poston's two books that i read this year the dead romantics and the seven year slip another unique way to include magical realism into two books they're just like literary fiction with romance subplots but the magical realism thrown into it like a magical apartment and just like seeing ghosts and stuff but it doesn't feel like it's overtaking the story it felt like such a unique way to include it within the storyline and like weave it into all the characters and the main character especially i really enjoyed the way that she did that it felt a little unique a little spin book that you read this year that you would reread so i honestly want to reread a bunch of books next year i really want to prioritize like if i love a book and i want to go back through it i don't want to feel guilty about my tbr i really want to reread some of my favorite books i really want to go back in and reread magnolia park series this one because i feel like i go through the books and kind of just open it up read some quotes that i love but i would love to really immerse myself again and reread the series i said this one already but beach read by emily henry i'm gonna do a yearly reread so this one definitely next year and along with that i would love to reread happy place again i connected to the main character so much that i would love to reread this get back into the little storyline and world between the two characters i loved this the way it started and ended and everything in between i just really connected to it and then i actually reread crooked kingdom this year and i would love to reread crooked kingdom again this storyline these characters are some of my favorites and i love the world that this is in and i love these characters literally so much so i would love again to go back into the grisha verse and read about the crows and their storyline especially this one and then again remember when i said i wasn't going to bring up the same books over and over again i just i can't stop so i would love to reread throne of glass and powerless i don't know throne of glass really in 2024 but powerless i feel like i'm gonna before the next book comes out but one day i would love to go back through the series because i feel like you learn so much in the beginning that it just all comes full circle that i would love to go back and see how it started and just because i love this book the last two questions aren't really about the books that i read this year they're more about like goals and what happened this year kind of more of a reflection so the first one is goodreads reading goal reflection and 2024 reading goal so we're gonna talk about that i guess more in some other reflection videos but just like right off the bat my reading goal for this year that i put on goodreads was 120 books and as of right now i've read 142 so i have surpassed my goal and i don't think reading goals should really tell anything about your reading year i mean those are the amount of books that i read but i had a great reading year regardless of how many books i read like i found some amazing books this year and whether i read 60 books 50 books 10 books like it doesn't matter how many books were read it just is how you felt while reading and i had such a fun year of reading i think i had a great year of finding some wonderful books and talking about the amount that i did i am happy that i met my goal went over my goal but aside from the numbers and the statistics of it i had a great reading year and i really again found some great books i think all that matters is that i was reading i was enjoying reading and i think for 2024 i actually want to make a smaller goal i know i read 140 this year and my goal was 120 but i think next year i wanted to make it 100 books i don't want to read like as many books as I did this year and not in like a bad way I think just a lot of it came from videos that I filmed I think I want to just slow it down find some books that I want to read and incorporate that into videos rather than reading books for videos if that makes sense so I don't think I want to read as much next year but again it doesn't matter the number the numerical sense of it as long as I'm reading and enjoying it or all of us are reading and enjoying it I think that's all that matters the last question is what will you prioritize in your 2024 reading year so I feel like I always say I want to branch out into different genres but knowing myself I always say that and I never do it I think I'd rather 
rather branch out within the genres that I love and I want to find new authors and try out new authors in these genres and maybe find some new authors that I love just like I did this year. Like there's so many that I now love because I just like have picked up a book by them and have ended up reading like a bunch of their books. So I also really want to prioritize my physical TBR because I feel like it has gotten out of hand this year. It's pretty big and I want to maybe make some videos incorporating my physical TBR into them so that I can lessen it a little bit. It's a little overwhelming because I love to buy new books, get new books people are talking about. You know, I see some books, I want to buy them, but adding them onto my physical TBR makes me a little overwhelmed because then it pushes back all the books that have been on my TBR. So I want to find some ways to get through my physical TBR next year before buying like so many new books. Even though I love buying books, I definitely want to lessen that. So those are my main goals and main reflections, I guess, of this year. We'll talk about it more in a separate video coming at the end of this year, beginning of next year. I'm not too sure when yet, but we'll chat about it more then. So that is my reading reflection of 2024, the end of the year book tag. Shout out Bestie Desk for creating this and picking these wonderful questions. I had a lot of fun. I think I had a really great year of reading. Again, found so many wonderful authors book series that I know I will love for a really long time. If you guys want to answer these questions in the comments, please do. I will leave these questions in the description for you guys to answer as well. And that is all for me from today. That is all for me from Book Miss for this year. Thank you guys so much if you've watched these videos, if you watched one or two or all of them. I had so much fun filming these, editing these, putting these out, and having you guys watch the Book Miss. It's just been a wonderful time. So again, thank you guys. There will be more videos in December, but hope you enjoyed Book Miss. I enjoyed Book Miss, and I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Bye!